let's take a look at how to get rid of these ugly Z seams in Bamboo Studio. First off, your best bet is just to hide the seam entirely. This model has some good examples of that. So on the lower hilt here, you have all of your seams hidden behind these black parts. So on the actual cylinder itself, you don't see any of those seam lines and they've all just been hidden. But when it comes back to being a cylindrical part, you do have a little bit of a seam right here, but it's getting screwed back into this part. So you're not too worried about that. Your other option is if you have a corner, like this black part here, you can hide it there. So this one is where the seam is right here and you can barely notice it versus the other side that doesn't have a seam. It's still visible, but barely, and you wouldn't notice it at first glance. So we've opened up this part in a new project and we've gone into the quality tab and we've looked at the seam. So these are the settings you can adjust for the seams in Bamboo Studios. And we have the seam position, which by default is aligned, which I prefer for the most part. I don't usually stray away from aligned and it's gonna try and put it in a corner and align your seam all the way up the part, which looks tidy. And this is what it printed out on that part you saw earlier. Nearest has a convoluted decision pattern where it prioritizes different features on the part and then just throws your seam in where it believes it will be the least visible. But I think it just kind of throws it all over the place and I'm not a huge fan. Back, we'll put it at the back of the build plate in a aligned fashion. So this is not too bad. An exterior corner is gonna be worse than an interior corner, but this will still look okay in my experience. And you've got random, which isn't exactly random as much as it is equally distributed. And so you slice this and it's just kinda all over the place. And I don't love the look of this personally, but it might look cool on some props for a, a certain effect that you're going for. But usually this, this just looks like a bunch of little dots and specks all over your part. Cause instead of having that line all in a straight line, you're just throwing that across your entire part and ruining the look in my opinion. So we'll stick to aligned. And if you wanted to change the corner that this was painted in, so this corner here, say we want to go into the other side, we're going to go into the prepare tab. We'll go into seam painting and by default, this is one, I believe, but if you want more precision, you bring it down a little bit and then you're going to go paint to where you want that seam to be and try and have a steady hand, which I don't have currently. And we're just going to hit that corner all the way through and we'll slice that plate. So I wasn't accurate enough there and we've seen that it kind of deviates a little bit. So I'll go back, I'll erase all painting and I'll try again. Really just trying to stay right in that corner. I think I still messed that up. I'll slice it. There we go. So that's what I was looking for. We shifted it from this side to over here. We're still using aligned. And the painting tool does work with the other seam positions, but it just looks weird. Random ends up being this random scatter shot in a row where you've painted it. So that's how you hide the seam and place it where you want to place it. But what if there's nowhere for it to hide? What if it's a cylinder all the way around and it's a smooth surface? Well, let's take a look at your options here in Bamboo Studio. So for this, I've set up a test platform here with a bunch of little cylinders. And we're in the quality tab again under seam, and we're going to take a look at the seam gap. And so the seam gap can be set between zero and I believe there's no cap on the upper limit. You can set this as high as you want. It's just going to keep increasing the gap at the seam itself. So if we go into preview, when we've sliced this, you can take a look at what this looks like. And so that's the 300 one that I just adjusted and we'll go into prepare and change that back to zero. So these test pieces have been set up with a zero through 100 in 10% increments. So you got zero, 10, 20, 30, and so on. 
And the way that looks is this here where the gap increasingly gets larger. And you can very clearly see this in the slicer that there is a full gap at the 100% and it's fully closed at the 0%. If you wanna get a better look at this seam, you can untoggle the seams check mark and that will just stop showing the white dot at the location of every seam. And you can, you can clearly see that we do have a gap that opens up across every single one of these increments. And so let's take a look at what that looks like in real life. I'm surprised by how little difference this actually makes. This is the 0%. And then you have 10%. And then even if you take the 0% beside the 100, not really a huge difference happening here like you have zero beside 100 which should be a very large difference and you can see it in the slicer that it looks very different but in reality it doesn't make a huge change and like at a distance I wouldn't be able to really tell between any of these what the difference is that brings us back to bamboo studio here where the only setting left is the wipe speed and I did a test between zero and 80%. And again, I really didn't see the difference I was looking for. I didn't see a difference at all, really. So that's as far as we can go with the seams in 1.8.4, but they've just recently released a 1.9.0 beta, which is a public beta available to everybody. And they've included scarf seams and scarf seams look really good. So let's take a look at how to set those up. The 1.9.0 public beta is available on their GitHub, and I will link this in the description. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom past all of their release notes, you'll see the downloads and you'll see the .exe file. That's the file you need to download and install if you wanna use this new public beta. Just keep in mind that the 3MF files generated by the public beta version of Bamboo Studio are not compatible for uploading to Maker World yet, or potentially ever. So if you intend on posting to Maker World, maybe hold off on this, and you can only have one build of Bamboo Studio on your machine at a time. So if you already have 1.8.4, you can't also put 1.9. It's one or the other. So you can't have both on the machine at the same time. Just something to keep in mind. Now we're in the 1.9 beta. And you can see our seam settings here. We now have a scarf joint seam as an experimental setting. And we're going to select the contour as the option and leave everything the same. And we're going to print this out and see what that looks like. But if you head into preview here and you select the flow as your uh, viewing option. So we usually by default, it's line type. And you can sort of see what's going on but it's way easier to see if you head over to flow. And if we go about halfway here and just check one of these layers, you can get a better idea of what's going on. And so we go through the entire layer and this out, outside wall here, you start to put it down and you come all the way around and then you actually overlap for 10 millimeters, which is the setting that's set here by default, 10 millimeters. And so what it's doing is it's putting a little bit, it's rising just a little bit across that 10 millimeters until it reaches that 0.2 layer height. And then here it goes from 0.2 all the way down to zero, creating an overlapping seam, which should look better than the regular seam settings. This setting smooths out the Z seam and already just turning it on definitely has an improvement on the quality of the seam, but you can still see where it starts and ends. So I think we can do better and we can keep making some adjustments to make this even more seamless. I'm pulling these optimized settings from Adam L on printables. He's done a great write-up here of scarf seams. I'll include a link in the description to this write-up. 
Like with most quality improvements, we're going to go slower and wider here. So the outer wall, we're going to set to 0.6 with the 0.4 nozzle. And then we're going to go with a inner, outer, inner wall pattern, as well as slowing down the outer walls. So the outer wall we're going to set to, he recommends 100. I've had good success with 75 even, so I'm going for absolute quality here. I want to go real slow. So we'll send this over to the printer and see the results. Here's the scarf default for reference. And then here is the optimized scarf settings that we just put in. And it is slightly better, but you still have a very distinct line at the beginning of the scarf seam. And I've seen better results online using Orca Slicer. So out of curiosity, I downloaded it. And here are the results of that test. For some reason, Orca Slicer just doesn't have that same distinct line at the beginning of the seam. It's a little bit more smoothed out. All the settings are the same across both platforms. And I would have assumed that Bamboo Studios implemented it the same way as Orca Slicer but I just got some more consistent results in Orca Slicer than I did in the 1.9.0 beta. Here you can see them all side by side and give them a good comparison. On the far left, we have the scarf default from Bamboo Studios beta. In the middle, we have the optimized settings in beta. And then on the right, we have the Orca Slicer with the optimized settings. And you can see that the beginning of the scarf seam is just a little bit more visible in the Bamboo Studios models. Here's another model that I tried this scarf seam out on. This is the default seam, just aligned and very visible, followed by the Bamboo Studio scarf seam, which was almost perfect, but it left these artifacts at three different points. I'm not sure where these come from. I can't really see it in the slicer as far as what's different. But then we have the Orca Slicer model, which looks amazing. None of those artifacts are showing, and I'm not sure where this comes from, but that's two for two where the Bamboo Studio scarf seam just doesn't quite measure up to the Orca Slicer. If you've made it this long, another way to get rid of the seam on this part is to print it in vase mode. This is a perfect candidate for vase mode because this model has very thin walls. They're only one millimeter. So if you bumped up to a 0.6 nozzle, you could just bang this out in vase mode and it would look perfect like you see on screen right now. Where I believe scarf seams start to fall apart is on spheres. So you can see in this model here that the sphere shows it a lot more prominently than on the cylindrical faces. So definitely keep that in mind when you're slicing your parts. This is a very good technique for cylindrical walls, but as soon as you start to get some overhangs or turning into a sphere at the top, this starts to fall apart a little bit. Thanks for watching and thanks for making it this far into the video. I didn't intend for this video to be this long initially, but it just got out of hand and kept going. Uh, I hope you don't see this as a bait and switch of starting in Bamboo Studios and ending in Orca Slicer. That's just where this video took me and that's where the better settings were and that's where I got the better results. If you are having issues with your initial seam and it's just looking way worse than what you saw on the video here today, make sure you check out the calibration steps in the slicer and do a flow calibration and dial in your filament that way. I hope you liked the video. If you learned something, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.